Hi, I hope you're having a great day. I'm sorry I'm late, but today I want to talk about your gut and how you can build your gut health. Now, there's so much of information around the gut and what we can do, and most of it is correct, but how much of it will we do? Now, what I'm talking about is applicable for your children, for you, for your parents, senior citizens, everyone, because we need to understand today, if you have a problem with your gut, you have multiple other problems in the human body. Sometimes if you're struggling to lose weight, you're struggling to get that glow in your skin, your hair's falling too much, you start having skin, acne issues, rashes and all of that stuff. We can treat these symptomatically and individually. But when we look at the gut, if you have even one symptom of a poor gut, which could be chronic acidity, bloating, all of these problems, too much of flatulence, abdominal pain, you know, and you keep getting all of these issues, including constipation, IBS, too much of diarrhea, these are all symptoms that your gut microbiome isn't working the right way. And by only fixing that, you would fix 80 to 90 or even 100% of the other problems that you have. When you think your gut, you think your immune system. I keep telling everyone across the world that if you do not want to get cancer, if you do not want to get sick, if you want to recover from a sickness that you currently have, you need to think immunity, immunity, immunity. Immunity is that intelligence that we're all born with. Some of us have it compromised. Some of us, it's already there, but we compromise it with poor lifestyle, sleep deprivation, too much of sugar, lack of exercise, and all of these things. But our immunity is working for us every second of the day while we're awake, while we're sleeping, while we're eating, while we're studying, while we're playing. Our immune system is constantly on alert, looking to protect us, looking what needs repair, growth, rejuvenation, you know, recreation, and all of those things. So when it comes to your gut bacteria, what we want to understand today is your microbiome. There are trillions of different kinds of bacteria. All bacteria isn't bad for us. The world has become too clean. You know, of course, hygiene is important, but we've become so clean that we don't even feed our gut microbes with bacteria. So we have little microbes. You have good bacteria and bad bacteria in your gut. Now we need both of them, the good and the bad. But the problem is when the bad bacteria starts growing more than the good bacteria, this is a problem. These bacteria, think of them as gut microbes. These microbes start feeding on the mucosal lining of your intestine. Now this is a bad thing because as you, as you deplete the mucosal lining, bacteria, viruses, germs, all of that stuff, they can immediately interact with the tissues of your intestine. Your body will immediately produce inflammation chronic inflammation, which we see in IBS, Crohn's, constipation, colon cancers, autoimmune conditions. So what happens is these gut microbes start eating small holes into your gut wall. So now certain particles that are supposed to exit your system, you're supposed to pass it out in your stool, squeeze between these large holes that your gut microbe has made a hole into, into your blood system. So all of a sudden your blood system has particles, food particles, molecules in your blood which shouldn't be there. So your immune system wakes up to attack it and it goes on attacking it over and over. That's something we call autoimmune. So Hashimoto's thyroid, lupus, multiple sclerosis, all the autoimmune conditions that you can think of, we first have to look at basically repairing your gut. So if we don't feed the gut microbes, they're bacteria, they're living bacteria. Bacteria have life, they're hungry, they wanna eat. If we feed them the right foods like dietary plant fiber, we're giving them the right probiotics, the right prebiotics. I'm not talking about supplements. Today, the whole gut game has become about buying prebiotics and probiotics. Yes, if we need them, there are some great supplements in the market, but most prebiotics and probiotics you will find in your own kitchen, in your own food, and we're gonna talk about that today. So if we feed the gut microbes the right they will behave the right way and they will support our immune system. We need to understand that your microbiome also regulates your hormones. So if you have a hormone imbalance and all of that stuff, you need to think your gut health as well, including your brain function, your moods, happiness, sadness, mood swings, depression, anxiety. Your mind and your gut are connected. They are connected by cranial nerves and if the communication between your gut and your brain isn't the right communication, you have a breakdown of communication, you have problems. So we need to work with the gut. We need to understand that the good bacteria and the bad bacteria are both important. So let's get straight into solution mode. Okay, it is very, very simple. If you get onto these fad diets that do not allow you to eat your fruits, do not allow you to eat certain vegetables and all of that stuff, you're left with a gut issue. I know so many people on fad diets, they're losing one kilo, two kilos, three kilos, but their gut problems are increasing more and more and more. 
because your body doesn't care about how much weight you need to lose. Your body cares about getting the right nutrition to keep you in survival mode and to feed your microbiome so that your microbiome can help with all the other vital functions in your body. So number one, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, lentils, legumes, and whole grains. All of this facilitates a balanced diet. For the longest time, most people ate a balanced diet and most people didn't have these issues. Today, we're moving to fat diets that take out most of these macronutrients or micronutrients. Not only are we not losing weight or we're losing and putting it all back on again, but we're getting sicker and sicker. Low immunity because the gut isn't intact. So we need to look at our diets. Am I getting fruits, at least two servings or three servings of fruits? Am I getting at least three to four servings of vegetables? Am I getting at least a handful of different unsalted nuts in my daily diet? Am I getting lentils? Am I getting legumes like your rajma, your chana, your beans, all of that stuff? And a good whole grain. I'm not talking about simple carbs like white flour, white sugar, and all of that stuff. I'm talking about complex carbohydrates like your vegetables, your whole grains, like, you know, a good... Uh, a, a brown rice, which is mixed with your vegetables, a white rice, which is mixed with your lentils, which becomes a complete protein. It's all about food combination. That's the number one thing. Give your gut what it needs. And when you have fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, legumes, lentils, and whole grains, you are feeding your gut. Number two is fiber. More of, most of your gut microbes feed on dietary fiber. Now, fiber can also be hyped up. People take too much of fiber and that starts irritating their gut lining. So it's, again, if you're having a balanced diet, like what I told you, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, legumes, lentils, and whole grains, you are getting sufficient fiber. You don't have to try to put more fiber. When you go on to fat diets, then you have to supplement fiber. No one tells you how much fiber to add. And that's why we start having more issues like IBS, Crohn's, and inflammatory gut conditions. So when you keep it balanced, your body works for you. When you move out of balance, you need to try to start figuring out what else to add. And you don't know that, your nutritionist doesn't know that, your dietitian doesn't know that. No one can tell you how much of fiber your body type needs. Okay, it's very difficult to say that. So everyone follows a book rule, 30 grams of fiber, 35 grams of fiber. Well, that may not be the case for everyone. So keep a balanced meal happening and everything will work out automatically. Second thing, to build up your gut, especially your children and you, you need to start playing with mud. You know, get mud, order organic mud, order pure mud that doesn't have any, you know, dog urine, rat urine, dog poop in it or any of that stuff. You know, if you're not used to playing in gardens, you live in a city where you don't have access to gardens and all of that stuff. You know, when my daughter was growing up, I got a whole box and I filled it with soil and she would play with that soil every day. Even just playing with the soil with your hands microbes can get in through your nails into your system and you feed your microbiome with perfect nutrition. So children playing out in the mud, you know, getting dirty. Like when we were all small, we grew up getting dirty, coming home dusty and all of that stuff. Today, we don't allow our kids to come home dusty and all of this stuff. We're keeping them clean all the time. Some parents give their kids three baths in a day. They constantly use hand sanitizers and all of that stuff. That is decreasing your immune system. If you must use a hand sanitizer, make sure it is not alcohol-based. You get a lot of essential oil-based antimicrobials. It should not be taking away all the bacteria. So use an essential oil sanitizer if you must. Now, when it comes to foods, we have several prebiotics and several probiotics. I'm gonna tell you, take you through prebiotics because a probiotic, there are so many people just buying probiotics and popping it. Probiotics will not work without prebiotics. What are some of the prebiotics that we already have? Garlic, onion, apples, bananas, oats, cacao, that's your, you know, your raw cacao nibs. So make your child a hot chocolate once in a way or give them some amount of dark chocolate. You eat dark chocolate. Anything rich in cocoa is great as a prebiotic. Flax seeds. You can take a tablespoon of ground flax seeds, put it in their porridge, put it in their oats, put it in their food. There are several ways that you can get it into their smoothies as well. Apple cider vinegar, a great prebiotic. A great prebiotic is isab gul, that is psyllium husk. A teaspoon mixed with a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar mixed in a glass of water. Consume 30 minutes before your lunch and your dinner in case you can't have any of the other prebiotics. So I'll repeat that again. Garlic, onion, apples, bananas, oats, cacao, flax seeds, apple cider, psyllium husk. These are great prebiotics. Now these prebiotics will help feed the probiotics and make it work better in your gut. What are some of the easiest probiotics that are available? If you're not vegan, if you're not lactose intolerant, yogurt. Homemade yogurt will have live bacteria. That is the best way, that is the best probiotic to feed you if you're not vegan and if you don't have lactose intolerance. You get something called kefir. 
Kefir is easily made at home today or you can get it easily available in the market. People are making it at home and selling it. It's available everywhere. You wanna make sure that the kefir doesn't have any sugar in it. Kefir is a great probiotic. Something called sakra. Sakra is basically pickled cabbage, pickled beetroot. You can make this at home, you can buy it out. It is a fantastic probiotic that works with your gut. You have kimchi, which is nothing but your cabbage, which is fermented. In India, we have pickles. Our normal homemade pickles are great probiotics. Just make sure you use the right quality of oil, you use the right quality of salt. You don't wanna overdo it on pickle, but having a little bit of pickle with your meal will work as a great probiotic as well. Kombucha, we all know about kombucha that's made out of ferment. It's a fer uh, fermentation process. It's got green tea, it's got brown sugar, which basically, or cane sugar that ferments. It's a great probiotic. If your child is below the age of nine or 10, we don't suggest you give them kombucha because of the green tea or the black tea. Buttermilk, India loves buttermilk. Again, if you're not vegan, if you're not intolerant, a good homemade cup of buttermilk is a great probiotic again for you. Cheese. Fresh cheese is also a great probiotic for you. So you see, there are so many things. My favorite that works the best is something called rice kanji. If you have leftover white rice, take two tablespoons of the leftover white rice, cool it, put in a little mud pot, fill it with water, cover it. This is in the evening. Keep it overnight, it'll ferment in the morning on an empty stomach. Have two or three tablespoons of the rice or the water. You don't wanna have the rice, that's fine, have the water. That is a great probiotic for you. And these are the simple things that you do to build your gut health. Now, all of us don't have to build our gut health. It's already good. What are the things that make our gut health bad? Sugar, 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 and sugar. Processed food, junk food, because this goes and it just depletes, just depletes your good bacteria and feeds the bad bacteria. So if you're that kind of person who has these insane cravings, insane cravings of sugar all the time, you know you have bad bacteria because that bad, bad bacteria feeds on carbohydrates, simple carbs, and sugar. So every time it's hungry, it's gonna express its hunger in the form of a craving. And it's gonna be a craving that willpower will not fight. So you wanna clean out your gut immediately, start building your gut health, start killing that. We all know of candida. If you have candida in your system, you are gonna have insane sugar cravings. You gotta kill that candida, either through your detox diets, speak to your medical professionals about it, but then the sugar cravings will come down. So every time you eat more sugar, you are feeding the bad bacteria. So you'll find the bloating, the acidity, the constipation, everything, your IBS, everything gets worse. So junk food, sugar, keep it to the minimum. If you're trying to build good gut health or if you're not trying to destroy your gut health. <clears throat> The second thing, a sedentary lifestyle. If you are sedentary, you will have bad gut health. The gut health, your gut requires a constant circulation of blood because blood carries oxygen and nutrients from the food that you eat to feed it. Like I said, your microbiome is a colony of growing bacteria. It needs blood, oxygen, and nutrients. So if you're sedentary, you're gonna have gut problems. You can pop all the probiotics in the world. It'll do nothing for you unless you get up and start moving. And the third is anxiety. Anxiety and chronic stress will inflame your gut no matter how healthy your diet is, which is why we encourage you to involve yourself in deep breathing, meditation, pranayama, exercise, everything that can reduce how you take stress. Stress is there in everyone's life, it's how we take that stress. So a lot of people with gut issues will notice that the more and more they get anxious, the more they run to the toilet, IBS symptoms come up, flare-ups, gut pain, bloating, acidity. Anxiety and your gut are directly connected. So we gotta learn how to relax, Take it easy if we wanna take care of our gut. And of course, antibiotics. Certain medications and heavy antibiotics will wipe out your gut bacteria. So when you're on an antibiotic, whether your doctor tells you or not, you need to be on a probiotic because a broad spectrum antibiotic is designed to kill the bacteria as well as all the other bacteria. That's why it's called broad spectrum. It kills all the bacteria. So if you're not on a probiotic, your antibiotic is actually gonna make you sicker, weaker with lower immunity. So if you are on an antibiotic, please take a probiotic. And anyway, like I said, keeping it simple because simplicity is the new cool. If you just eat the balanced diet that I just spoke about, which Indians have been eating for the longest period of time, we think our diets made us sick. No, the sedentary lifestyles have made us sick. Sick. The sleep deprivation has made us sick and too much of stress has made us sick. Indians have been eating this kind of diet for years and years and years and no one had a problem until lifestyles changed. So this is the way that you build your gut. And to all the moms and dads out there, please understand that your child's growth is dependent on their gut health. So you want to make sure, no matter what, feeding them sugar and taking them out for treats all the time isn't, isn't a gesture of love. It is now a gesture of stupidity because you are destroying their gut. 
I'm not saying be extreme. Take them out once in a way. Give them a treat. But if this kid starts getting addicted to sugar and pizza and they want it all the time, you know you built an addiction in them. So please be smart and understand that loving your child and all of that stuff, there are different ways to do it. It is not through food, especially junk food. We are doing a disservice to young children at the age of two, three, four, feeding them sugar and junk because you're addicted and you can't break your addiction. Imagine a child who doesn't have control over their motor and sensory skills. They are addicted from the time they start having it. So when you want to start giving your child all of this stuff, they should be at an age where you can explain to them the dangers of junk food and sugar so that they can work with logic. But once you start the addiction process, you are in that and you are doing a disservice to your child. Your child is not feeling more love with the sugar and the more junk that you're giving them. So please understand that there are other ways to make your child feel loved and appreciated and build your relationship with them. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right and breathe deep.